when we see a patient who has visual snow syndrome, the first step is we try to identify what symptom is most severe for them. Most often they come in complaining of, you know, it could be anything from blurry vision, double vision, um, words smushing together while they're reading, losing place while reading, headaches, eye strain. But one of the symptoms that comes across most of the patients is light sensitivity. Um, and so in finding out which of those symptoms are most severe, typically we're, our first approach is to look at what kind of glasses prescription is going to help them. Prism can really help relieve their symptoms. We'll look at tints. We have a wide variety of tints uh, that have been shown to treat visual snow syndrome. So we'll let the patient explore which one gives them the most improvement. Once we've established what can we improve with glasses, the next would be to see if they're a good candidate for color overlays. Color overlays are a basically a tinted sheet that um, you would put over your, your work or over your computer to reduce the glare. Basically, the contrast of black and white is something that is really, really bothersome for visual snow syndrome patients. And so it's not that it's blurry, it's not that they're always light sensitive under all conditions, but it's that black and white contrast that is really act activates and bothers them. We use the color overlays to reduce that sensitivity and it makes it much more comfortable for them to read. They can usually read faster and easier. Um, and then using those on the computer can also have obvious benefits as well. Then we can start to explore if color light therapy would be helpful. Um, another name for color light therapy is photobiomodulation. And it's similar to the other light therapy treatments that are out there right now, except that instead of being applied topically like a lot of light treatments are, this is a treatment that you are looking at the light. So it's working along the same pathways as the, the system that controls our diurnal rhythms and our autonomic nervous system. So that's all set by light. And so this kind of light therapy is working along that same pathway in the brain but we're using very specific wavelengths of light to help to calm down the level of hyper, hyperactivity in certain areas of the brain that can contribute to a lot of symptoms. Our color light therapy patients usually are really, they're, they're experiencing a lot of improvement. It ranges based on the cases, but everybody um, who does it does tend to find some benefit in their symptoms. So the last therapy that we consider is neurooptometric therapy. And we usually leave this until last because we want to manage the patient's symptoms in their case as best we can with any kind of passive tools to help improve their symptoms because vision therapy is like physical therapy for the eyes and the visual system. So it can be you know, a little bit more challenging. We wanna make sure they're up for the challenge, but it's usually a really important piece to help to address these tracking issues and these focusing and these eye teaming issues that are causing a lot of their symptoms. When we get to that point, they're usually doing pretty well. And by the time they're done with vision therapy, most patients have remarkable improvement in their symptoms. We do find that patients who come in with more severe cases are tougher to treat. And oftentimes we're trying to find the appropriate goal or target for how much improvement they're able to get. The patients where we don't get as much improvement as we would expect, sometimes we'll need to refer those cases out to find out if there's anything else going on, anything else at play. It is true across the board that the cases that are more mild are easier to treat, but we still have many cases that are moderate to severe where we have a lot of success as well. You know, I think with regards to success rate, we pick our patients really carefully and we don't have a patient start in a therapy if we don't think they really are going to experience success with that therapy. So given that our patients see 80 to 90 percent success rate with these treatments in general, um, of course it varies widely and um, as far as how much success somebody gets, but most patients are getting the kind of success that will allow them to function on their, with the daily activities that they want to. And that's our goal is getting them to function with work and with their recreational activities without having to be impeded by their visual snow syndrome. And so as far as achieving that goal, I do find that we get 80 to 90% success.